Good morning. Our call to worship is printed. I invite you to respond with the bold print. The Lord be with you. We come to worship God in our need. We come to God who comes to us in Jesus. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come as we are because it's God who invites us to come. We're going to join together in a moment in singing Christ is King. The first three hymns this morning are all by, the words are all by Sylvia Dunstan, a Canadian United Church minister. Um, and since we're doing, talking about creativity, I just thought it'd be interesting to highlight this particular um, hymn writer. Um, so the first, now, the words you will find in the book, but the tunes are going to be different than the book. So. Let us pray. Lord God, we do come to worship you, the triune God of grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have made us, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us, to be the King, to be the crucified and exalted one. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who lives in our lives calling us deeper into relationship with you, shaping us, forming us. We thank you for your work in our lives and that you invite us to participate with you in what you are doing in the world. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our prayer of confession is printed in our bulletin. Let's pray this together in unison. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news. It's while we were still sinners that Christ died for us, the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to God. 
Let's believe the good news that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven, transformed to begin again as the followers of Jesus Christ, remade in his grace and his love alone. Amen. I got these a while ago. I like to play with them. They're pretty interesting. Because there are interesting things you can do with these. This is one way to do them. Do you like to play with things like Lego? Blocks like that? Is that fun? Is it fun to use the sets that are exactly and just follow them precisely? Or do you do your own thing with the Lego when you have Lego? Your own thing? Yeah. Both? Yeah. Um, I confess that with Lego, I follow the directions. But what I like about this one is there were no directions that came with this set. You can do whatever you want. So you can do it this way. I like building a tower, but it's sort of hard to build a tower once you've done this because I don't have an endless supply. I have a number, but I don't have an endless supply. But if I could give you, e if I could, I, I'm not going to, if I gave you each like 15 or 20 of them, we'd all build something different. It, it wouldn't look the same. And that's cool. But we're all using the same things, the same pieces that go together and so just in the same way that God's made us all unique, we also have the same pieces, same parts, mind, heart, soul, spirit. We're joined together, we are who we are, but we're also, so we're both distinct, unique, but also like one another. That's part of the mystery of what it is that God has made us as. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have made us. Made us each different, but also in many ways the same. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Head your classes. Let's join together in singing, You, Lord, are both Lamb and Shepherd.
Before our scripture readings, let us pray. God of grace, open our ears to hear from you. Speak to us your word. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 36, reading verses 1 to 7. Bezalel and Oholiab, and every skillful one to whom the Lord has given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all that God the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezalel and Oholiab and every skillful one to whom the Lord had given skill, every one whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. And they received from Moses all the free will offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work in the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning, so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from their task being performed, and said to Moses, The people are bringing much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and the word was proclaimed throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people restrained from bringing, for what they had brought was more than enough to do all the work. And from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He runs our scripture reading for this morning. When I planned out this series on what are human beings, this morning's sermon had a particular direction that I had imagined for it. But as last week progressed, it took a turn I did not expect. So, yes, it's going to be about creativity, but there's going to be a a healthy dose of participation with God in here as well that wasn't the original part of the plan. So, here goes. In Mitchell, for a number of years, the church there did a Irish stew supper on the night of the Santa Claus Parade. The Santa Claus Parade took place on a Friday night, and so we provided this Irish stew supper so that parents didn't have to worry about what they were going to feed their kids. They could just come straight to the church, have supper, and then go off to the Santa Claus Parade. We did this for the whole community. Now, there was one recipe that was given to five different people who each were charged with making a roaster pan full of Irish stew. Same recipe, same ingredients. They weren't the same. How could that happen? From the chuckles, you all know, right? Creativity happens. Even within structure and parameters, even within guidelines and recipes, creativity happens. And the same is true for the way we think about what it is that we are doing in our relationship with God and who we are as human beings who are creative. Because we are invited to join God in what God is doing in the world. And God is on a mission. God is on a mission of restoring the world to the way it was supposed to be, to bring about the reconciliation of all things. And Christ has come to be part of that reconciliation process. And we are invited to participate with him, with God, the triune God of grace, who is bringing about the restoration and reconciliation of all things in the world. 
But we are human beings. We are not clones of one another. We didn't all come off some magical photocopier and all look the same, act the same, are the same. We're not. And so within the structure and parameters and vision that God has, God says to human beings and invites us as human beings to participate with what we have and who we are in what God is doing in the world. And we come with different kinds of gifts and abilities. We come from different places in the world. We come with different socioeconomic backgrounds. We come with different languages and cultures as we look at the more than 2 billion Christians around the world or the 7 billion people in the world in entirety. And so it's not all the same, but driven by the same truths. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Prayer meetings are a good thing. We have examples of them in the Bible. But I want to tell you that if you look at Christians around the world, North American prayer meetings are rather boring. I don't know if you've ever been to a 5 a.m. Yes, I said 5 a.m. 5 a.m. worship prayer time in a Korean church. I have. It isn't one person prays and then there's lots of silence and another person prays. No, 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 no. Everyone prays out loud at the same time. For an hour. And then they go off to work. From the African subcontinent, there are usually are people, there's a single prayer but the rest of those who are gathered become the encouraging section. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray it! No, we are pretty sedate. But are those three wrong? Is one of them better than the other? No. But they all are within this parameter, this idea that, gather, that Christians gathering together for prayer is essential. But how it's lived is unique to the context. And this balancing act between parameters, constraints, and freedom is this fine art that we walk all the time. In the passage we read from Exodus, God had given Moses detailed, I should be careful, not detailed, God had given basically Moses the blueprints for what the tabernacle, the sanctuary, was to look like. The size of the Ark of the Covenant was described, its material was described, it was covered in gold, that's there, that the, what the walls of the tabernacle were made of was described, how high they would be, all of that is there. But if you start to dig down, you realize quickly the how is not there. I've had some friends who have tried to build models of the tabernacle. And I can tell you that they have read carefully, seriously, with thought, what it says, and their models don't look identical. Why? Yes, they have the same shape and scope and size and all of that, but because of their abilities and skills, it's done differently. So we go back to the Ark of the Covenant for a moment. God didn't say how the sides were to be attached to one another. He trusted the craftspersons to do that, the artisans to do that. How the gold was going to be laid on, that was the artisans' tasks. And so there is this constant balance between parameters, constraint, model, and freedom. 
Now, if I can take that away from building the tabernacle for a moment and jump to something as different as playing hockey, I think we see the same thing. Hockey happens on that rink surface. You can't go play in the stands. You can't walk out the back of the rink, run around the building, and come in the other side to try to score a goal. It's on that ice surface. There are limits. There's constraint. And that then leads to the creativity on the ice. It is in fact the very fact that there are parameters and constraints that leads to enhanced creativity. The Catholic scholar thinker G.K. Chesterton said that the most important part of a painting is the frame. His point's the same, right? There's a limit. Within these dimensions, on this canvas, the artist does their work. So a Van Gogh is amazing, a Da Vinci is incredible, the group of seven, my personal favorites, are amazing because they are living within the constraints, the parameters, the limitation. And within that space, and the limitations of their palette, their paint palette, they produce amazing creativity. Do you understand this balance? Why it matters? It matters. And so, yes, we can kick against the constraints. We can say the parameters are bad, that they're in the way, they get in the way. Or we can choose to play on this ice surface creatively, to paint on this canvas amazingly. Now, if I can take those ideas and run them back through the sermons we've seen the last couple of weeks, so let's take worship. Worship has a shape and structure and purpose. It is to bring glory to the triune God of grace, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's a place where we come to be with God and to hear from God. Those are the parameters. Those have to be part of what worship is. If those aren't there, it's not Christian worship. But nowhere in those sentences have I described what has to be. So we have Christian churches. Well, let's just, let's just take this building. We're just, we're just going to limit our story to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church over the last 160 years. So in 1834, when the first building was built here, there was no organ there would have been a canter with a pitch pipe or the tuning fork. You can still see the tuning fork. We have it. That would have been, the tuning fork would have given the canter the tone, the note. And from there, without instrumentation, the people sang. Only psalms. I don't know if you've ever been in a context like that. At first it feels a little weird. But there is a beauty to what happens in that kind of space. Is it better or worse than going to a wide open worship service with drums and guitars? No, it's not. It's just different. Driven by the same parameters, the same structure. I can be lifted by Gregorian chant just as I can be by the organ with all the stops pulled. Because it's around these parameters, these constraints, this focusing on who God is, and within that space, there's creativity and room. Or to what we talked about last week in terms of being community together. There are different ways that happens. 
God has made human beings to be in community. But what that looks like and how that is lived is going to be unique to each situation, and we will bring our own particular skills and gifts and abilities to that reality. And so I know that there are dozens of collectives of seniors who call each other every morning. That's called community. It's called community. They found a way to do it. I know a bunch of young people who have an ongoing text life together. They too have found a way to be community. An extraordinary number of people tell me they're going off to the vault to have coffee a different kind, a different place, but yet community nonetheless. Now, with all of the stuff I've talked about, with all these ways that we live this out, we know, if we go back to community for a moment, we know that there are communities that are healthy and there are communities that are not. And so back to constraint and parameters, there are ways and patterns and guidelines to how we be community, even as we are creative in how we do those things. Again, this balance of the two. The interesting other piece from the Exodus text is that yes, there's Bezalel and Ohaliab who are the ones who get named, but then there is the throwaway line and the others, the other artisans. Bezalel and Oholiab didn't do it all by themselves. This was a community effort. We get the same feel from Psalm 150, where we have the list of all of those instruments, a huge collection of instruments that were played in ancient Israel. Together, community, collective with one another. Community, together. Because not everyone has all the skills, all the gifts, everything that is needed for the church to be, for the kingdom of God to come. No, collectively we join that process. As you all know by now, I am not a musician. I cannot even carry a tune. But when I was younger, I dreamed of playing the trumpet. Does that surprise anyone? I think the trumpet would fit my personality. The problem if you play the trumpet is, if you play really loud, no one else gets heard. My brother-in-law is a gifted trumpet player. And watching him in jazz ensembles and, play in, and also play in church, I have learned something. That sometimes the trumpet player needs to be silent. To not play. And that means that when they do play, there is an additional beauty from their having been in silence. That in this reality of being the community together, people who have been gifted with creativity, there are moments where there is a give and take. Moments where we are silent and let the other lead. Where there's a balance of all of this together within these broad parameters, these guidelines that God has given about how we live. That just as they were instructed about the parameters for the building of the tabernacle, and within that there was space to be creative. The same is true for all of our lives as we follow Jesus Christ. There are parameters, but those parameters in fact allow creativity to be fully realized in its proper place. Thanks be to God that we have been made creative beings Thanks be to God that we have been placed where we can express that. Amen. 
Questions, comments, pushback? Shelley. I, I think the other piece around, so the, the question is that there was so much poured in that, mo, that the artisans come to Moses and say, whoa, stop, we got too much. Um, I think there are a, number, so a couple of things that can be said there. One is that this is for a specific need, so they're saying we got more than we need for this purpose. Um, and so there isn't another place for it to go easily. Um, but I do, I do like the analogy you've drawn to the trumpet being quiet, that there are places where, yeah, we don't need this right now. Um, I think that that has place. I also think that deeper than all of that is just the joy that people had in giving, right? The overflowing abundance with which the people of Israel gave towards the building of the tabernacle is really quite astounding. That they, and, and there, if we're playing with this idea of creativity, they found even those who were, did not have, have the skills of artisans were in fact given space to participate through what they gave. Yeah. Young team. I agree. So Yantin's comment is about that it's easy to say our style, our approach, our way is the right way. And an illustration I like to use with kids in confirmation classes is Christianity, the, the plethora of denominations, is like going to Baskin Robbins. There are 31 different flavors of ice cream available all the time. Now, I've never seen someone go to Baskin Robbins and say to the gathered community, thou shalt only eat French vanilla. The other 30 flavors available are not any good. I've never seen anyone do that, never. But I agree that sometimes we think that we need to say our approach to worship in particular is the only one. I think that, you know, this is a situation in terms of that pattern where it's live and let live. That doesn't mean that I have to attend a worship service that has a style that doesn't fit me. But I shouldn't go around sabotaging it. I have in interviews for, with search committees said, I dream of a church where everything from Gregorian chant to hard Christian rock is possible. So again, we're going to sing a Sylvia Dunstan piece. Um, the tune is not the one in the book, but it, the words will be on the screen. It's number 728 in the Book of Praise. The storm is strong, we face the wind.
Let us pray. God of grace, we thank you for making us creative beings, for giving us skills and abilities, the creativity to respond to the challenges around us. We thank you that you invite us to join you in the recreation, the restoration, the reconciliation of this world. We thank you for the parameters that you have established, the constraints that are there that allow our creativity to find full bloom. Show us what we might do to participate with you in the restoration of this world. We do come praying for this world. We pray for peace in Ukraine. Now 30 months into the conflict, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in Gaza, that the rest of the hostages would be released, the violence would end, that miraculously beyond our imagining, peace would come. We pray the same in Yemen, a conflict that has gone on for longer than we can even imagine, really. Bring peace, we pray. Remember those who are sick. We pray for those who grieve, and in particular, we pray for the family of Elizabeth Fixter. You surround them with your love and care, support. And we come rejoicing in the good that you bring to our lives. We say thank you. In this silence, we bring to you our thanksgivings and our requests, knowing that you hear us. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have some announcements to bring to your attention. You'll find them on the inserts in your bulletin. So we want to thank everyone who was part of the Vacation Bible School and for the help you provided. That was great. Um, you'll find an insert about the grief share gatherings taking place starting in September. And you will find in the inside the bulletin um, announcements about youth group ministry starting up and other events taking place. And um, Jocelyn has an announcement for us. Good morning. To uh, draw your attention to the fluorescent yellow insert, um, and it is requesting um, volunteers to staff the booth at the fall fair which is coming up very soon um, friday september 13th saturday the 14th and sunday the 15th um, and i as i reread my announcement here i said uh, we're looking for 18 people or less i should say 18 people or more in the in the in the um flavor of community because um we have two people staffing the booth at all times, so you're not there alone, but it would be wonderful to have six people <laughs> staffing the booth. So even if you're um, 
just visiting at the fair and you swing by the booth and hang out for a while, that would be strongly encouraged. So um, if you are available and willing to help out, uh, please contact me, all the information's on the flyer. Thank you. Let's give to God who has been so gracious and generous to us. Our tithes and offerings will now be received. Let's pray. God of grace, take these gifts that we return to you. Use them for your honor and for your glory in this, your world. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join together in singing, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, is now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.